forward. Okay. Hello, Pink Power team. I'm glad you guys are joining us today for our Zoom And I am really excited. No one outside. No one outside. Suzanne Clinton on, on the Zoom call with us. Before we get started, before I introduce her, I will ask you guys that um, if you will do us a favor and you will mute yourselves. Um, if you go um, to your screen that you're on right now, and if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, you should see a button that says mute. If you will click that button for us, please, and mute yourselves, that would be great. Um, that way you hear us but we don't have to necessarily hear some of the things that are happening um, in the background. So thank you guys very much if you will do that. Um, I do want to thank Suzanne Clinton for spending time with us today. She is our Upline Diamond Ambassador. Uh, Suzanne has been with Plexus for three years. And Suzanne, you've been at Diamond for two of those years, or over two of those years, right? Yeah, February is when I went, so a little over two years. Yeah, so she's been doing this for just a little while and at the top of the company for a while. So um, she has graciously come on and is going to talk about some of the um, questions that you guys had listed in our thread. So we don't want to ha don't have too much time, so we're going to get started right now. Um, so Suzanne, thank you for being on. And one of the first things that a lot of people on my team mentioned in that thread is how to help with team motivation. How can we help motivate our team? All right, let's talk about that. Um, okay, so I was kind of jotting down some notes today and just trying to think about, first of all, what are the reasons, what are, what are kind of people's excuses, or not even necessarily just excuses, but reasons for um, maybe you feeling like your team is not motivated. Why are they not? What, what would make them not motivated? And so I brought, jotted down a few things. First of all, it could be, Maybe they think the products don't work for them, so that's unmotivating. Or maybe, um, maybe they didn't get, they made their first post on Facebook and they didn't get the response that they thought they were going to get from people. Um, so that was discouraging. Or maybe um, they didn't go gold in 10 days, like they think everybody else is. <laughs> or maybe, um, you know, maybe it's just a belief thing. Maybe they don't believe in themselves that they can do it, um, that they have. Um, I don't know, the network or the confidence or the skills or whatever to be able to make it um, in plexus. Or maybe they're scared to make a post. Maybe they're scared to see what their friends, um, you know, what their friends might say and their family. Um, and then I wrote, you know, maybe they're trying to do everything they can, but they're not getting, maybe you're not getting responses from your team members. Like they're not messaging you back. It's like crickets. You're just not hearing anything, whether it's team members or customers or potentials or whatever. So those were just some things I wrote down that I thought would be kind of unmotivating for people and discouraging possibly. And so I kind of went through and I was just thinking, okay, what can we do to solve some of those issues? I'm kind of like a person, my personality is all right, let's write this down. Let's, let's figure it out and let's try to solve it. So I, I'm kind of a writer. I just like to take notes like this. So one of the things, first of all, in my opinion, and I'm just speaking from my own experience, um, when I signed up and then when I have team members sign up, um, one thing that for me was, gonna, was motivating was that I got a paycheck that very first month. Okay, and I, um, I don't I think it was, you know, I don't know, 250 bucks or something like that. So I got that that very first month and that was exciting because when I signed up, I was just signing up for, um, I just need to get my products as cheap as I possibly could. And I maybe even get them paid for. I didn't even realize if I, that I could at the time that it was able to get these products paid for, but I just knew I wanted to take the products and I wanted to, um, get them as cheap as possible. So when I signed up, you know, I was pretty excited. I was, um, I was like, yes, you know, I just, I just spent money. I um, bought my welcome pack. You know, I spent a hundred dollars or $200, whatever you spent. And I was excited. Okay. So when you sign up a team member, they're going to be, I mean, I'm not saying the most excited ever in their business, but they're going to be pretty excited because it's like, sweet. I'm, I can't wait to get my products. I'm going to try it. I'm, you know, I want to build with the business and I'm ready to, for this to work, you know? And so right then and there is when you need to take advantage of that and you need to contact them and you need to start getting them trained. So 
you probably heard this before from Laura or, or whoever, but you know, you got to get them trained in that first 48 hours. You got to contact them. I say get them trained, not completely because there's so much, but contact them within those first 48 hours and really do just a few things. And I like to stick to a very simple duplicatable system. Okay. I don't like to, this is not meant to be this big, huge, overwhelming, unachievable thing. That's not what Plexus is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. You're getting healthy. You're helping others. Um, you are um, learning how to, you know, build your business. And I'm three years in, Laura's two and a half years in, we're still learning. Okay. We're still have things that we're learning about Plexus. And so going back to what I was saying, you've got to get them excited and, and trained and ready to go. And my goal is always to get a paycheck in their hands that very first month. So by doing that, you've got to reach out to them. So let's think about this. People that um, maybe started getting unmotivated and they, um, I don't know, they didn't get the response they want or maybe the products didn't work. Okay, well, why didn't they, why didn't they work? Well, maybe they weren't hearing from a team from their upline and they just didn't have that, um, you know, check in of how are the products going? You know, are you taking them every day? Um, are you being consistent with them or, you know, how's your team member that you just signed up? Have you contacted them? You know, staying in contact with them and doing that. So a lot of times, you know, someone might get unmotivated because there's been a big time lapse. If you wait two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, whatever, to get with that team member that you signed up more than um, not always because some people are just self motivators and that's great and they, they get it and they're ready to do it. But they're going to, a lot of times there's a good chance that they're going to just lose that excitement and they're going to stop and they're not going to do anything. So definitely, you know, when you first sign up those people, get them trained and, and start working with them. And, and Laura talks a lot and I do too about a lot about the success plan. We have a success plan Facebook page you can go to. It is a 35 page document, but that's not, that doesn't mean you have to learn all that. A lot of that is ingredients or, okay, here's choose this product for this. And <clears throat> here's an example, email, something like that. But in there, it goes straight through and I still use it. How to do a three way, a welcome call when you're signing somebody up. Um, you know, let's, let's get your upline and your, and your new ambassador on a call and let's talk about what we can do to get them to get them to grow. And so, um, so signing up from the training them from the very beginning. And then something that is huge that we all talk about is just in that first phone call, when you contact them, really talking about their why and getting down to their why and what, why did they sign up? This is how I ask them. I say, why did you sign up in the first place? You know, are you just looking to get healthy? Are you excited about building the business? Because I still do calls with wholesale ambassadors, even if they tell me wholesale ambassadors, because you never know. And, um, you know, and just really asking, um, asking them, you know, are you trying to quit a part-time job? Are you trying looking to quit your full-time job? You just need some extra cash because their why is what's going to help them through those harder times. Remembering that this is why they're doing this. This is why, oh yeah, you know, Susie, did you, um, maybe they're getting discouraged or something and you can go to them and say, oh, don't forget, you know, you told me, um, back when you started, you were, you just needed that thousand dollars a month. And so don't give up because I know you can do this. You know, this is your goal. You're doing this so that you can quit that part-time job or you can uh, provide and pay for whatever it is you need. So reminding them of that why and coming back to that is huge. And so hopefully that should be motivating. Um, I have more motivating team, but Laura, did you have a few more things about motivating? I know we can get into contests and stuff like that. I hadn't talked about that yet, but. Yeah, I mean, that was the only thing I was going to say is one of the things that I like piggybacking on what you said is to get them started quickly because, and to get them motivated quickly, building that passion with them, building that excitement right off the bat. Like you said, Suzanne, if you wait for, I would say even four or five days, you know, I mean, and they haven't heard from you and there's no welcome call with your upline. Um, that excitement that they have can sometimes turn into fear almost. I mean, you kind of have to strike while the iron's hot 
um, and, and really begin to get them involved in team um, atmosphere and excitement and motivation right off the bat, that's always going to help, always. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that um, I've had on my team that have fallen off, um, it's because I didn't do my job um, as their upline and their sponsor, and I didn't, I didn't get the ball rolling quickly enough. Um, so I think that is very, very important. And then, of course, if you're going to talk about contests to continue to motivate them, then I'll let you talk about that. Um, yeah, you know, and I think sometimes I was telling a team this yesterday, sometimes for, as far as contests go, you might just need to, and I've had to do this a few times, just put on your team page or if you have, if you don't have a team page, ask a few of your ambassadors, you know, what motivates you? What, what kinds of things? Does cash motivate you? Does um, some plexus swag does um, gift cards, you know, whatever it is that might, you might just want to ask him because I will say that different types of things for contests motivate different people. And so you've got to kind of maybe ask him. I don't think it hurts because sometimes you don't realize. Um, and, and do, do a, do contests like that. You know, um, for those of you that feel like, gosh, I just, I need to do contests, but I don't really have that much money. or don't really have that much to spend. You don't have to spend a lot. Okay. You can do something small. It doesn't have to be much. I mean, you could do $10 or something for anybody that adds, you know, two ambassadors in a certain month or something. Or if you have some swag sitting around or three day trial pack, people like product, you know, you can always use that for samples. Um, one girl, I think she's doing it this month on my team, or maybe she did it last month, but she did like a little surprise box and she had four different things in there. Um, I think one of them was a t shirt like a Plexus t-shirt, Another one was, uh, maybe it was a cut, like one of those water bottles. You can get like those, um, forgot the name of it, but the stainless steel water bottles. Another one, um, it might have been a bottle of something. And, you know, so just thinking, and then if they do whatever she was telling them to do, then they get to pick. So that's kind of fun too, because some people, I mean, her fourth thing might have even been 10 or $15, you know, just kind of whatever equaled the other stuff. So um, you can always pick, you know, have them pick and, because and have a variety of things in there too, but maybe getting them to, I did a let's go silver one. Um, I think Laura's done that too. You know, you can do like a getting people to silver. Um, if you get to silver, a lot of people like sure wins, you know, like, okay, if you do this, you're going to get this. Sometimes if you're, um, have a bigger team, um, you know, you kind of just have to do drawings, but if you can find something that's a sure win, I've realized that people really, tend to like that and that's exciting for them. Um, but getting them to do that. And then as far as more motive motivation part, and then we can move to the next topic, but, um, even just, um, you know, you gotta do your best to find influencers. Um, you can find those. And when I say influencers, I mean, people that, um, if you have to, who was it? Rebecca Davis was telling us yesterday. She was like, go look at your Facebook friends and, Anybody who has more than a thousand friends, reach out to that person. You know, if they have a big network on Facebook, reach out to that person and, and just contact them and say, Hey, I think you would be really great. You know, we've had, we have different, um, emails that you can, you can use to send to people, you know, that kind of gives you ideas of how to do a cold email or whatever, but finding those people. So someone who's very networked, maybe somebody who's a big fit into fitness, who would be real good and has credibility already just from being very into health, um, would be a good business builder. Um, my dog is like asking me to go outside or take her outside. Hang on. I'm gonna have to walk for a second. You know, so, um, just asking them and figuring out what they like and what they, what kind of contest they want to do, but you can, you can always change it up. Laura, did you have anything on contests and then we can move on? I don't really have anything on contests. I do want to say one more thing about team motivation. And I know for my team in particular that a lot of the reasons why they asked you about this, Suzanne, mm -hmm. is because I hear this all the time. I'm posting in my team page and it's crickets. Okay. I'm, I'm doing contests and it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to get them motivated and I can't get anything motive anybody going. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that so many times and I know you have too, Suzanne, and I just... I will tell you guys that sometimes it's just about finding new people. Mm -hmm. It's about finding new people and you staying active, you adding on to your team on a fairly consistent basis mm -hmm. and, and just continuing to be excited and motivated even when they may not be. Yeah. I mean, 
it can be really easy to be like, ah, oh, only so many people got on the phone call today. Dadgummit. Well, you just can't think like that. You just have to stay positive and you have to stay motivated and you have to expect that your team is going to catch on fire one day and you just keep doing the work and your team will become motivated as you train and as you grow and as you add more people and you find that rock star that takes off with that massive momentum, your team is going to catch on as well. Yeah. So just stay consistent um, and keep motivating them and they will come around. They will. Yeah, absolutely. Good word. Um, okay. You ready for the next one? Yep. Okay. This is my favorite question personally. And Suzanne, we would love for you to talk to us a little about a little bit about duplicate um, and how we can duplicate on down levels one, two, three, four to counteract some of the attrition that we're dealing with. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So I like this topic because um I have seen that in my own team. Um, Laura has other people, other jewels have every, lots of people and that, and, and obviously the duplication is what makes network marketing work. It was, it's what makes our business model work. So you have to have, you have to get duplication to happen. I mean, you can, you should always be striving to add level ones and, and to recruit and everything. But if you can't go deep, it's going to be hard. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult to move up the ranks. So, um, but, before I get to that, I just wanted to share with you real quick about my own particular organization and how it looks. Because I want you guys to see that, number one, do, that you guys can do this and you don't have to have a million level ones. And number two, how important duplication is and how, how it really and truly, the power of three and all that truly does work and then we'll talk about some strategies of what to do. But, okay, so first of all, where'd it go? I have it written down. So I have, I'm a diamond, just a couple days ago, ruby, ruby on my second leg. So diamond and the ruby on my second position. I have um, 34 active level ones. So 34 people have their backup orders on. 19 of them are working it, like they're working the business, trying to build so that means 15 of them are wholesale ambassadors. So they just bring me in those five points. Um, seven of those level one legs are jewels. Um, four of those jewels are diamonds. Um, and then on levels one through five, with a, which I think just one of them um, being a level five, are diamonds. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you in that is that the key is duplication and getting the power of three people to understand the power of three and, and to keep adding to your team can, and going deep to on your level. So, um, you know, just a few things on that, you know, I'm, I'm not at all saying duplication is easier said than, I mean, it is easier said than done sometimes. Um, but that's why it's so crucial. What I said just a minute ago about training and what Laura said at the very beginning, I think if you can get people to get it and to understand the business model and truly how Plexus works and how it's set up and get them to, that, to realize that they just need to keep trying to go silver every month and, and, or even more, you know, and just keep adding people and keep adding people to your team. That's how they're going to grow. So you do that by getting ambassadors. So you do that by training well, and if you don't know how to train, if you're kind of still not sure what to say and what to do, ask your upline. Go to the success plan. There's some, like I said a minute ago, there's some kind of verbiage in there a little bit, I believe, and kind of what to do and what to say. But get those people on fire and motivated. When you get those people motivated on fire, they're going to want to duplicate and they're going to want to build with you. So a lot of times, even finding a power partner, finding someone that can be come alongside you and say, you know what, I want to do this with you. And, and that can be encouraging and that can help you guys can kind of build together, whether there's um, somebody on your team or maybe they're just a, a sideline friend too. Um, but making it, I think I just keep thinking as far as duplication goes, just 
you got to keep it simple. You just have to keep it simple for your, for your teams. And when I say that, I mean, I could go through the whole thing, but just a few points is, you know, um, this is a Plexus business. Here's how it works. Get them to get it and understand that you have to build and you have to duplicate to move up. Tell them, start off. I, you know what I did? When I first signed up, I took the Plexus compensation plan and I did, I didn't even look at Emerald. I didn't even look at Ruby. I didn't look at all of those, you know, we get paid so many different ways. I didn't even look at all of those yet because it was a little overwhelming for me. And so I just did one step at a time. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go silver. What do I need to do? Okay, I need to add three people to my team. And I need to, uh, with their backup orders on, and then I'm silver. Then, okay, gold. Well, okay, now they have some pay point system. I need to figure out what the pay points mean. You know, I've got to have 15 outside my leg, primary leg, and 100 points total. So taking it step by step. And when you're talking to your ambassadors and you're getting an ambassador on your team, make it simple and duplicatable for them too, okay? You know what? No one knows about it in your network, so you got to get some customers. You need to get some people to try the products first, and then you want to get them to love the products, and then you want them to hopefully turn into those ambassadors for you It's because they love it, and they want to sell it, and they want to do it. So I, I would say that there's not necessarily a, you know, um, do say this exact thing and this exact thing and this, you know, to get people to duplicate because obviously you never know. But I will say, I just want to tell you this really quick. I have a girl on my team. She just went, uh, she just went senior gold last night. Okay. She signed up with me August of 2013. So it's been like two and a half years. And um, she was a boot camp trainer. I was so excited about her. She's fit into fitness, all that. And she, um, she added people to her team. And she would, I mean, she probably added I don't know, a total of 12 to 15 people, but she wouldn't, she just didn't train them at all. Like she, she would sign them up and then I could never get hold of her. It was those, yes, I mean, we all have it, the crickets email, you know, where no one messes, you know, no one responds. And I was like, oh my goodness, for the love, seriously, train these people, stop signing them up, you know, but she didn't, tra she didn't train them. And then, you know what happened? You see a bunch of white lines. So she also had some things going on in her life at the time and, um, you know, what, for whatever reason, you know, just wasn't consistent, just didn't do it. So 18 months later, last summer, she contacts me and she's like, okay, I know I dropped the ball. I really love this. I, I get it now. I want to do it. I'm ready to go for it. And so she kind of started working it in the fall and she went gold last month. Um, she even contacted all those inactive ambassadors and, and talked to them about it and tried to get them back on our team. Went gold last month out of 23 people total to her team, 12 of them being her level ones. And then this month, last night, just went senior gold. So she did, she double ranked two months in a row and is hoping to go Ruby. Of course, I think her goal is this month, but might be a little more realistic for May. But all that to say, I'm telling you that because you never know people that you sign up, even if you don't hear from them and they're not, you never know when they're going to come back and when the time's going to be right and when they're ready to do it and and ready to go for it so um did i forget some things i may have laura did you have anything to add to that on duplication well i was going to send you um my graphic and completely forgot but oh yeah for those Ooh. of you that are on my team and i don't yeah y'all can't see it um okay i sent out to our team page last month i do believe a new ambassador checklist it was a graphic and one of the things that i love that suzanne said was we have to make this simple and in plexus because we are so one plexus and because we have help from suzanne and we have help from laura and you have help from heidi and all of our sideline friends sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with a huge system of how to train our team and I think that in, in some ways that can really be detrimental to us um, because we make it really hard and overwhelming at times to our new ambassadors. So I made this new ambassador checklist, Suzanne. Okay. And number one is just signing up the ambassador and picking out a welcome pack. It's easy. Two, the first thing you do is schedule a welcome call with that new ambassador within 48 hours, if possible, of signing them up with your upline, getting them on the phone with your upline so they can be welcomed. Um, and, and I think that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Three, add them to the team pages. 
and tag them in the important information that they need. So you're immediately adding them and welcoming them into our family, okay? Four, you're gonna send them the welcome email with the success plan so that they'll have it in their hands. Five, complete a welcome, uh, com complete that training call, okay? You've got it scheduled, now you've gotta complete it. You've gotta get it done. And then six, you're gonna help them schedule a launch party and, as soon as possible. Either a power hour online or something at home um, or, or whatever it is, you're gonna get them scheduled a launch event as quickly as possible. And then seven, you're gonna continue to train them, tag them, follow up with them. To me, Suzanne, that's what it's all about. You know, getting that power of three in front of them, but not such a huge, long list of stuff over and over that they kind of go, <gasps> you know, because I, you, Suzanne, you know I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Learn. So that's my checklist, just well, a very simple to-do list. And one thing that keeps standing out and just everything she, you've been saying, Laura, and that we just talked about is just, I, mean, I just feel like it boils down to consistency, you know, just being consistent no matter what. And um, you've got to really put things into perspective. Um, for me, when I first signed up, and even now, really, $500 is a, a month is amazing, you know, and I just want to encourage some of you because I've heard this lately too from some team members is, well, I just haven't really shared even my financial story or told anybody because it's just not very much and I don't really have a business story. One of my other level ones said that she has a potential, I don't know if she signed up or she's getting ready to, I think she's getting ready to, and she said, and the level one told her, she said, you know, I, she's silver. And she told her and she said, you know, I've got, um, you know, I'm making at least four or $500 a month. And that's like way more than my car payment. And, you know, I mean, and it's, or I don't even know if she said that. I think she just said I'm making about four or $500 a month. And the potential was like, are you serious? Like, and I don't know where she lives because I would love to live in her house or, or have her mortgage. But she said, that's close to my mortgage. She was like, I guess her mortgage is like, oh, is four hours a month? I know, I don't know where, but, um, but she was like, that's close to my mortgage. That would pay my mortgage. That's amazing. So you never know what can strike a chord with people. So don't hesitate to tell them, you know, what, what is happening in your life too and what it's meant for you. I mean, it's always good to have, you know, up, upline and, you know, these big, huge stories, but sometimes, you know, the jewel level, uh, financial situation can be overwhelming for some people sometimes. I mean, I think it's good to watch, but sometimes it can be like, well, I can never get there, you know? And, and so, so don't be afraid to share with them those, those victories that you might think is small, but is not really that small. You know, I don't know why I just thought of that, but yeah. anyway, so, um, but yeah, consistency boiling down to just being consistent um, in your business. And you know what? If somebody's not going to respond to you and you just can't get a hold of them, you can't make them and you can't make them be motivators. Um, you move on and you tell them you're here for them. Kind of like what I did with Melissa and, um, I, I can't make, I couldn't make her, you know? And so I moved on and looked for more blood and focused on my people that wanted it. So, all right. Okay. We've got about okay. The next thing that we have is um, if you could please help us with overcoming fears okay. and self-doubt. I know that is really, really huge, especially for people that are kind of new, mm -hmm. just hesitant to reach out, to talk to people. What will they think? I'm not really good at this. Yeah. No. Well, this is something that I wished that I would have really focused on with myself and my team in the beginning. And I honestly probably have not, did not start focusing, bleh, focusing on it until about two years in because I didn't realize how important it was. And I just didn't think about it. But I realized when I got down to the core of even myself, no matter, even though I was in a diamond ambassador, when I got down to that core and realized, um, gosh, I, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I was a diamond, but I was like, I, I don't really believe that I'm that great at being a leader or I'm that great at having ideas or whatever it is. So that's something I've started working on with myself in the last six months to a year. But what I find is with people is, um, 
so many people are saying, I'm doing this. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I'm reaching out to new people. I'm posting on Facebook. I'm posting on my team page. I'm following up with these customers, but nothing's happening. You know, well, a lot of people truly don't realize that the core could be within yourself that's holding you back and just um, not thinking that you can do it. If, and I am so excited because um, for those of you that live in, um, well, you can drive or fly, so I don't care where you live actually, but in Little Rock, we're having Sonia Dudley come um, to do her Mindset um, Matters, her John Maxwell training in uh, end of August here. And so I'm so excited about that. And we did, we had a big jewel training um, uh, that we did in February. Laura went with me and, you know, there was a section on that and uh, Mindset Over Matters. And it's huge. And um, Sonia has a book that she always encourages. I think it's called How to Talk to Yourself. And I need to get that. I haven't gotten it yet. But you'd be amazed at, um, you know, the things that, I mean, just here it is, Satan and maybe even yourself or maybe somebody from your past, whatever puts into your head that makes you think that, you don't have what it takes to do it because you see all these other people um, moving up the ranks quickly or being what you think is successful, um, you know, and, and you're like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I do this? Why, why are things not moving forward for me? And so um, I would encourage you to really invest in yourself now and find um, some books that help you with personal growth um, and we can give you some of those examples. Um, I'm sure Laura has shared before, but I just think that's huge. And people, and I didn't realize from the beginning that that was important. I just thought, well, you got to do this, this, and this to get it to happen. And when it wasn't happening for some of my team members, I was like, okay, there's an issue here. Like what's, what's going on, you know? So, and I know Laura has some great things to say about that too, because she shared and been one of my favorite experiences of learning about personal growth <laughs> through your experience. Oh, mine. Well, together, uh, both of us, but yes, I'm very passionate about it. And if my team has been around me at all, um, in the past, I'd say four or five months, maybe even longer than that, six months, then they have seen me talk constantly about this topic because I feel like for me personally and for some people on my team, Suzanne, that the reason why we are stuck, okay, um, and maybe not moving forward, other than it just not being God's timing because I'm all about, you know, in the timing of God and, and his perfection. But for me in particular, it was a huge mindset issue. It was a huge fear issue. Um, you know, people not liking me or um, I'm not good enough, that sort of thing. And I have told my team the same thing that you just said, Suzanne, is that if you can't um, overcome that battle in your mind, um, I talk all the time about Satan being, it's almost like the devil angel kind of thing, you know, like mm -hmm. Satan's right here yeah. talking in our minds all the time. You're not good enough. You guys probably saw my post on Facebook yesterday about this. Um, and he will do whatever it takes to discourage you and plexus because he knows that if you become successful, you're going to do good things. Mm -hmm. You're going to change people's lives. You're going to change their health. You're going to be able to give more to charities in your church. And he doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to do whatever he can to keep you from it. So, um, absolutely reading books. Um, what the book Suzanne was talking about is called what to say when you talk to yourself. Thank you. It's by Shad Helmstetter. So not Chad, but Shad S H A D Helmstetter H E L M S T E T T E R. What to say when you talk to yourself. And then another great book that you guys should get and if you're on my team, please do, is by Dr. Caroline Leaf, like a leaf from a tree, okay? And it's called Switch On Your Brain. And I could go into great detail about this, and I won't because we don't have time, but guys, <laughs> here is false evidence appearing real. It's false. It's not real all the time. So don't let fear of obje objection or what people are going to think Anything like that holds you back from being all you can be in Plexus. It's just false evidence appearing real. Okay, sorry. I can go on and on. Oh, 
<laughs> no, and she's a huge, you're a huge testimony of that, I think, because it's so true. And, um, you know, even this person, these per- the personal growth period has helped me in my marriage and my, my relationship with my kids and other friends. And, and so, I mean, I just think, I think the whole world needs to work on personal growth. You know, I mean, everyone needs to, but yeah, but I mean, it, yeah, but I mean, it can be generationally changing, Suzanne. It can change your generation. Yeah. No, you can right. change your mindset mm-hmm. and how positively you think. Yeah. No, you're okay. exactly right. And I love it that I feel like it kind of, our business that we're in makes us tends to make us focus on it more. I'm not, I don't know. I'm sure maybe people do it in corporate the world, but I don't feel like they focus on it. Like, I don't know, just kind of with just what we do. I think it's, I think it's just more in something like what we do because we're about relationships and that's what our relationship marketing. And so we kind of have to figure all that out. So we deal with rejection more than you would. Exactly. It's a little different in the other. You just do the same in day in, day out for the others. Anyway. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Moving on to our last question for you for the day is, um, Suzanne, how do we seal the deal when we have somebody that we're trying so hard to get it to be a customer or an ambassador and they keep going, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And like three, four months later, we're like, then come on. How do we finally get them to join? Well, first of all, it's happened to all of us. It's happened to diamonds. It's happened to rubies. It's happened to silvers. It's happened to non-silvers. So it happens to everyone. Um, and so one of those things again, where obviously you can't make people do it. Um, but here's the deal. What I have to remember in my head, and this is a little bit of a mindset and this was early on. I kind of figured this out. I was talking to my husband counsel, you know, he was like counseling me. I was like, why are these people, not? you know, um, he just, you know, you have to remember, first of all, that you are thinking about plexes way more than those people are. I promise you. Like if you've reached out to a potential customer or a potential ambassador, they haven't gotten back to you. They won't respond. It's usually because they're busy and they just have either they or they're busy and they haven't gotten a chance to get back. Cause you know, you know, the, the, the dreadful <laughs> scene, <laughs> word scene or whatever, you know, when you see, you could tell people have seen if it's a Facebook message, you know, they've seen it or text, whatever, you know, they've gotten a text. Um, you know, so you're thinking about it way more than them. So you have to take the personal side out of it. It's not that they are mad at you. It's not that they know there probably are some people out there that just, uh, which drives me nuts because I'm the opposite of it. I mean, they just want to, they just hate conflict. So, they, and I don't like conflict, but I'm just saying like, I would rather respond and maybe I've learned through this. I'd rather respond to somebody and say, no, thank you. I really appreciate the offer than not hear anything. Uh, probably cause it's been done to me, but a lot of people may not want to, they think it's conflict. So they don't want to, if they're not ready or maybe they don't have the money or whatever it is, and they don't want to tell you no. Um, but as far as sealing the deal, so, so don't take it personally. Secondly, um, a lot of times what I do, so say I've sent a message to somebody and you know, maybe they've asked for info. I sent it. So a lot of times you think, well, they asked me for info. So, why would they not order? You know, why would they not sign up or order? And so you have to, what, what I'll do is they've just gotten busy probably. So if I haven't heard from them in, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe three to four days, something like that. Um, give them a little time. I'll just send them. I'll try to think of something that maybe I forgot, which sometimes I strategically don't put in the message, like, or like I forgot to tell them, for example, Hey, Katie, I forgot to tell you, um, we also have the 60 day money back guarantee. It's awesome because you can try the products for 60 days. If they, if you don't like them or they don't work for you, no questions asked, you can get your money back. So maybe that kind of would open up the conversation again, like, Oh yeah, I totally forgot to get back to you. Okay. I need to order. Where's the website? You know, maybe that will remind them to do that. So think of little things or maybe they shared with you, um, uh, whatever their health issue was, maybe it's, um, I don't know, a, a thyroid issue or something like that. Go find a testimony. I did this with a friend the other day and I posted about it on my team page just a few months ago. And she was asked, I posted something on my personal page about the Plexus 96 shakes and, and big ingredients that are in it. And she commented, this girl I hadn't ever has never commented on any of my posts. <clears throat> she said, it, you know, is it gluten-free and soy-free? And I responded back on the comment. I was like, 
Um, I said, you know what, it, it is gluten-free. Um, I don't think it's soy-free, but I'll check on it. Actually, I don't think it is, but I couldn't remember at the time. But anyway, so, um, so I went back and I didn't leave it there though. And she didn't respond back. So I sent her a message. I put it over to a private message. And that's when I um, said, Hey Katie, I, um, you know, I did find out that it's not soy, that it is, um, it does have soy in it, but I know, and she had been, I knew this girl, I hadn't talked to her in a while, but she, I knew she was having some health issues she had for about three years. Cause I just talked to her mom and I opened it up and I started a conversation and I said, um, I said, do you, I said, you know, I said, Katie, first of all, how are you? I haven't talked to you forever. Your mom was telling me that you'd had some health issues, um, over the past couple of years. How are you doing? Um, can you tell me a little bit about it? From what she told me, I was thinking that we have some other products that would be great for you that might be able to help. And then she responded back and she kind of told me a little bit, turned out it was like adrenal fatigue and uh, maybe some thyroid issues. And so that I went over, found a testimony, two or three testimonies for, put it back in the, copied and pasted it, put it back in the message. Um, I said, it's worth a try, you know? And so, and she ended up ordering and she's a customer of mine. So all that to say, think of things that relate to them that come back. Maybe you can share with them. Um, hey, I found this testimony. Can you believe this? I know you're struggling with this, you know, if they haven't ordered yet. And just, um, you know, you don't have to be this, are you going to order? Are you going to order? Are you going to order? You know, I mean, obviously that's annoying. Don't do that. But you can just be creative and think of things to share with that. And as far as the ambassador goes, you know, same thing. Just, um, I don't know, share a you know, maybe uh, theirs is a money issue and um, they've been wanting, uh, they're a school teacher. I'm just thinking of that because that's mine. Share somebody's diamond documentary. I know that's big, but sometimes you could just go find a diamond documentary and be like, look at this. This girl used to be a teacher. She thought she was going to teach for the rest of her life and look what's happened. Like, you never know. I was like, I'd love, I encourage you to watch this and make it easy for them where all they have to do is click on it. So just be, again, being creative and thinking of ways to come back. And again, you never know when they might decide to take the plunge. It might take months. Um, you know, you can even check in with them. At, you know, if you don't hear from them after those three or four days, just wait a couple weeks. I mean, message them again. Um, you never know. So, okay. yeah. Okay, so, and I've got a, I've got a baby here in my lap now. Sorry. So, <laughs> I've got to get up in about five minutes. So, yes, a couple of things that I wanted to say about that too. One is I want you guys to remember how, when, how you joined. There are the rare few people that hear about the first time and join immediately, okay? But the vast majority of us, it took us a while to come around, okay? So just remember that. I have so many people who are like, I've been talking to her forever and she won't join. I'm like, how long does it take you to join? A year? Okay. So just remember that being consistent and persistent Pleasantly persistent yeah. is what it's all about. Suzanne was pleasantly persistent. She sent me an email and like she'd say, Laura, have you read that email? Hey, Laura, have you read that email? Have you read that email? <laughs> <laughs> that email? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, it wasn't that I was purposefully ignoring her. So you guys remember that. I wasn't trying to be rude to Suzanne. I wasn't trying to ignore her. She wasn't even getting on my nerves. Okay. Mm -hmm. She wasn't bothering me with her emails. I was busy. So please remember that if people don't immediately jump back, it's not that they're ignoring you or they hate you or they never want to be your friend again because you talked to them about Plexus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be that they're just busy. Yep. So just stay persistent with them. Remember that it can take people a while to come around to something like this um, and just get back, get back in touch with them. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Yep. And if it's meant to be, they'll, they'll join. Yep. So, okay. Um, we've got 15 minutes left. We do want, I do want you to talk to my team a little bit about convention. Yeah. Do you want to talk about convention? Then yeah. yeah, I've actually okay. got about five minutes probably if that's okay. Um, okay, okay great. Go. Convention. I just wanted to do a quick little convention push, um, to really make that a top priority. And I know it's in Vegas and you're like, and some of you may be thinking, Oh gosh, I've got to, that means I got to get a flight. I've got to get the hotel. I've got to get all that. Um, a couple things I wanted to share with you. Um, real quick, my very first convention was three years ago. It was uh, June 2013 in New Orleans. And that's about a seven and a half hour drive. And you can fly, you know, I don't know, two hour flight or hour and a half flight. And 
I was only on my second month. I think I just turned gold. Money was still tight. I kept thinking, uh, and I didn't have any team members here. I had team members, but none that could go. And I was talking to even Jen and Celeste about it. They were going to go. I was like, okay. I sat down, I looked at flight prices, and then I was like figuring about how much gas would cost. And I was like, okay, I got to figure out what is the cheapest possible way. So I weighed my options. Ended up being cheaper to drive, even though it was by myself. Um, I was like, I just think this is worth it. I'm going to just try it and see what happens. So drove those seven, seven and a half hours. Um, horrible. Oh, it's horrible driving to New Orleans. <laughs> Don't ever drive. <laughs> we just have to go all these back roads from Little Rock, at least. Is. Um, and so, have you ever driven, Laura? <laughs> it's just that. Anyway. I had like bugs all over my entire car. Anyway, so did that. There was only seven of us on total from the Destination Diamond Dream Team. Seven. from, And that was from Aaron Harrison, who is Jen Hawkins' sponsor, down. And so we went. We sat on the back row. I think Celeste had just turned senior gold, and Jen had maybe just turned ruby. And we were sitting there. Sheila Medina was the only diamond in the company at the time. And, um, and we just – it was the first time where – and it was going decent, you know, already because I was gold. I was like, sweet, this is going pretty decent, pretty good so far. But I remember listening to Alec and Tarl, and they had a bunch of different training sessions. And I just kept thinking, okay, I think I can do this. I really think this might be something big. You know, before I was like, well, this is great. I'm getting a little extra cash, but I don't know if this is even going to last, you know, what's going on. But the convention really helped me realize that this was what – I wanted to do and um, that this this could maybe work and that I could be successful at it and so it's encouraging it's motivating um, it's they've got training they've got true and um, this past convention and um, we had in convenient Phoenix last June it was great it was um it had some real tangible sessions that really really applied to your business um, no matter what level you were and um, as far as, um, you know, monetarily goes, I will just say, I just really encourage you to, um, you know, just remember that, number one, you can write everything off as business expenses. Um, and so you save there. And then number two, um, you know, you've got to invest a little bit to earn, to have a great return. Remember, they say every team member that gets there, you can earn an extra $1,000 a year per team member. It's like an average GoPro. They say that. Um, Eric Warre says that in that book. So um, really try to get there and find people. Ask Laura, ask me, ask whoever. If you're like, well, I don't have a roommate, you know, find you guys. People will hook up. I have some people. Uh, yes, they will. Yeah, I had some team members last year. Um, they didn't really know each other. And they're like power partners now, you know, because they room together at convention. And um, that saves you money. You put four, four people to a room pretty much. And so... Just be creative and find ways. Flights are cheapest on Tuesdays, I believe. Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. kind of the, yeah. isn't I in the middle uh -huh. of the week? So look for flights then. Um, <clears throat> I got a pr I got a pretty decent price on mine, um, and so for Southwest, you know, they have a nonstop and all that, you know. So um, just be creative. But I just encourage you to really rethink it. Remember, you've got that convention contest where they'll reimburse you the registration. You have a chance to win. Um, you know, maybe even a travel voucher or that winner's dinner. So they, they do things to help you. Um, but it is, besides Super Saturday, it's the number one um, biggest, greatest event, you know, that Plexus has and all year. And so I just encourage you to really, really rethink it if you haven't signed up and get there and try to bring people with you. Laura, yeah. do you have something about that? <clears throat> yeah, I just, if you've been to convention, you just, you just, it's an experience unlike anything mm -hmm. and it's so worth it. It's worth the money. It's, I mean, I had a lady on my team last year that her and her level one drove all the way from Dumas, Arkansas mm -hmm. to Phoenix. Oh, wow. I mean, they drove, they made it happen. They roomed together. They ate sandwiches. I mean, you, you have to do what you have to do. And like Suzanne said, it's all tax deductible. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be what, makes your business just explode. It could be where you get your oh, aha moment yep. um, and just changes everything. So please, please team, if you have not registered for convention, get in there and do that as soon as you can. I think it's probably going to sell out, Suze. Um, I would not be surprised. 
I mean, oh, it's like 12,000. Yeah, it's 12,000, right? It's 12,000. I think we're almost to 10,000 already. People signed up, registered. So, I mean, we still have two more months. So you guys get registered and get to convention. So, so important. And it's fun. It's so fun. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, okay. there's never a time where you're going to be with that many passionate, excited yeah. Plexus ambassadors. It's just good for team morale and just for just like confidence and motivation for you. I mean, it's so motivating. So, so yeah. motivating. It's like a big revival for Plexus. Yeah. <laughs> all the other times, I know, because all the other times you're just at home. You know, I mean, yeah, you might have some team members around you in your local area occasionally, but there's never one place where for four days you're going to be with that many people, you know, and yeah, motivated and inspired. <laughs> so, yeah, so true. So true. Okay. Well, I know we are out of time, Suzanne. Thank you so much on behalf of my team. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and give us some words of wisdom. And we will be looking forward to you sending us the recorded link to this because yep. we do have a lot of working men and women and they're going to want to watch this for sure. So well, thank you, guys you so much. Rocking it. So great job. And um, I hope to see you guys at convention. Yay. Thank, thank you, Suzanne. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye, you guys. Bye.